Hello, this is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial on the chi-square test of a single population variance. What we're going to do here is use the chi-square test to see if our sample calculation of hedge fund volatility matches our hypothesis about the population's overall hedge fund volatility. So what I've done here is pull, I'll expand these columns, and ending with the month December 2007, I calculated pe monthly periodic returns for the HFRI's hedge fund index. So in December 2007, the monthly return was 0.61%. In November 2007, the monthly periodic return was a negative 2.05%. And so this is our sample and I went back several months but we're just gonna look at the last year going back to January 2007 so those are the periodic returns then in this column I've calculated the variance so this cell here is the variance of the hedge fund index returns over the last 12 month period because it goes back to January 2007 that's the variance and then taking the square root of that, I get the standard deviation of that 12-month series. So now I'm going to collapse that and go up here and let's apply the chi-squared test. To make this easier, I pulled that line just to a single row here so we can just focus on that and focus on the idea of applying the chi-squared test. So just to remind you where we are, we go back one year to January 2007, that's a 12-month sample where the hedge fund return, the uh, periodic return for that month was 1.1%, but we're not going to use that. The variance of that 12-month sample is this number and the standard deviation, so here's the critical number to focus on. Over the 12-month period, the standard deviation or volatility of those hedge fund returns was 1.43 percent. Now we apply the chi-square test. We have a hypothesis that the hedge fund volatility is 1.5 percent. So that's our null hypothesis. The null hypothesis we want to test. We think the population is 1.5 percent but our sample produced something a little bit lower, 1.43 percent. Intuitively, I hope it makes sense that we only tested for one year, so the fact that we got 1.43 is not that surprising. It's very credible that the population variance is 1.5, and we're simply a, a little bit below that due to random variation in the small sample. Well, that's what the chi-square test is for. So our, here's our null hypothesis, that the standard deviation is 1.5% on a monthly basis. I square that to get the variance. And then I need a confidence interval or confidence level. I'm going to choose 95%. And what that means is, I'm going to just go over here to a chart. This is a chi-square distribution. It, this one's based on about 20 degrees of freedom. Now, the greater the degrees of freedom, the more this chi-square is going to converge toward the normal. So like many other distributions, the chi-square tends to become normal. In this case, when we say we want to conduct the test with 95% confidence, what we mean is if we imagine a boundary here on the left and then on the right, 95% of the area is, is under the curve. That means 2.5% here to the left, 2.5% here to the right. So if we produce, this is what the test amounts to, if we produce a statistic, let's say here at 7, is that inside that confidence interval or outside of it. If this 7, which would be here in the tail, if it's outside the confidence interval, that means that we're not confident that the null is true and we should reject it. It has to be inside the confidence and what we mean there is that, well, the sample is different than the null or the sample statistic is different than our hypothesized null but that could simply be due to random variation. So if we go back here at 95%, that's a confidence interval, so I need to break that out into both tails. So that means 2.5% and, 
and 97 and a half percent and now let me go back to the data and we'll conduct the test here's the sample standard deviation for 12 months here's my chi square test statistic so in yellow so all I'm doing here is implementing the chi squared test statistic is here's the key test statistic chi squared is equal to in the numerator we have n minus one that's also the degrees of freedom in my case twelve months of data n is twelve so n minus one is eleven eleven is our degrees of freedom it's that's multiplied by sample variance squared notice that's a roman numeral roman s roman usually does indicate sample statistics whereas Greeks usually connote uh, population parameters and that's the case here so we have the sample variance in the numerator and the, popu the hypothesized population variance in the denominator that's the formula for the chi-squared statistic if I do that here in my case for 12 months of data I've got n minus 1 is 11 multiplied by the sample variance and that's right here so that's the variance we got for the 12 months of data on the index divided by our hypothesized variance which is based on that hypothesized variance that the population standard deviation is 1.5 percent so you can see it's sort of an adjusted ratio of dividing the sample into the hypothesized population variance. In our case we get 9.98. And so if I go, what, what, will we, what do we do with that? Well, if I go back to the graph, we're getting 9.98, so we're getting something right about here. The question is, the test it, that we conduct really is, is that within the 95 confidence interval or not? If it's outside of it, then we're going to reject the null and we're going to say, well, the difference between our sample in our population is too great to be explained by randomness. So we got a 9.98. I have 11 degrees of freedom. Then I simply use the Excel function, which is equals CHI inv. I do, I do need to calculate both sides of that interval based on 97.5 and 2.5 percent. That's because together they get me the 5% that's outside of the interval, so that 95% is inside the interval. And in this, so you can see, here's the function, equals chi env, and I give it, in this case, the 97.5%, and then it does need the degrees of freedom, so that's the other key, that's the other key parameter in the function. And I get 3.86 on the left, and on the right, same function, just this time, I the first parameter is based on two and a half percent. So I get an interval of 3.8 on the left, 21.92 on the right. So that means with 95 percent confidence, I'm gonna my 95 percent confidence interval is gonna go over over here to three and over here to 21. This is a slightly different distribution, so don't worry about that. But the point is my test statistic a 9.98 falls within those intervals it does fall within a 95 percent confidence interval meaning 1.53 is is plausible if the population variance is 1.5 percent the difference is not great enough to not be explained by random variation and so we can accept the null or we can fail to reject it if you prefer we are, we can continue to believe that the actual population volatility is 1.5 and we got a natu uh, perfectly plausible deviation of that based on our sample. Now if we go down the list or further back in time consider at some point here if I go back to December 99 I have 97 months of data my chi-square statistic is 143 and it falls outside of my bounds. It's to the right of the confidence interval. So I reject it. I say, well, the fact that my sample volatility is 1.83, which is greater than my hypothesized 